Welcome to the show. We hope you have a blast. Thanks for making time for the Dealer Talk Podcast. Another business leader, here's a penny for your thoughts. This ain't a regular conversation, baby. This that Dealer Talk. Yeah. What this up? Welcome dealer. to another episode of the Dealer Talk Podcast. This is your host, Herb Anderson, wearing my um, off brand orange sweatshirt today. That's the kind of mood we're in here. Let's check in with our co host, Miss Charity M. What's up, Charity? What's up? Happy podcast day. Your hunter orange. I think that that's what that color is called. Oh, okay. Don't worry. Well, Nobody's going to no, shoot you in the forest no. anytime soon. Let's kick things off. All right. Um, any special announcements? We've got this fill cart thing going on at the end of November that I'm super excited about. That's right, folks. Fill a cart event. Mm -hmm. First one ever. Um, I'm, I'm super stoked. We did promos for it the other day and um, I was kind of there. It, it, I don't know. I just kind of had like a cool moment. I was like, man, I can't believe this. We're actually making this thing happen. Like it's been something that I've been wanting to do for a really long time. And, um, yeah, I'm excited to kick the first one off. I am too. Very excited. So, Although we um, did have that discussion about turkeys, remember? And I said that if you were going to do it close to Thanksgiving, you had to do it soon enough that they could defrost a turkey apparently there's a turkey shortage um yeah i i i, I heard that too. i actually experienced that a couple of weeks ago i went to I, I like to get um so we have this food called arepas in venezuela it's like a bread that you stuff with you know cheese or whatever and i i like to get my <clears throat> uh deli meats like at the at the counter i don't buy those pre-packaged stuff and um i went to to pick some turkey up and they were like yeah we don't have any and i was like are you gonna get some later in the day or later in the week and they were like no we don't know when we all we have right now is ham and i was like oh man that sucks i don't eat pork so just yeah. cheese arepa for me that sounds fabulous to me cheese and carbs mixed together well like happy and then, right there. yeah but then i got my my girlfriend's from paraguay and she made um these fried plantains or bananas and i stuffed them in there with the cheese and the butter and it was like real good so if you're ever eating at a venezuelan place get a, a arepa with cheese and fried bananas inside it's really good <laughs> I approve. All of okay. that, yes. that we are excited for those around us to be able to experience really good food as well. Yeah, no, it's it's really cool to put this thing together. And, um, you know, we're doing more than just turkey, right? We're going to fill yeah. people's groceries carts full of food. So that's the, I'm excited to be able to do that. And you know, I think we can, I was, you know, doing the calculations that we could do like 10 to 12 families, you know, depending on size and things like that. So it'll be really nice. Excited. That is exciting. Yeah. Anyway, anything else? <clears throat> no. What do you have? That's it. As far as announcements go. So let's just, uh, let's get into it. We're going to have Mr. Peter Duffy on the show. This one is an interesting one because we recorded with him. We did a like, double book session a couple of weeks ago, and now we're doing the intro. So if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, you're going to see some you're different attire. That. He's not wearing a bright orange. Yeah. Foot. Don't worry, folks. We didn't, we didn't like pause and go change. And then <laughs> <laughs> We don't do outfit changes here at the Dealer Talk Podcast. My favorite thing about the Peter Duffy episode was that he had to stop and leave and then come back because his um connection to what is it starlink yeah something like was that. bad that's fun i don't have cool yep, yep, internet yep. like that <laughs> it was interesting too because we told him and he was like okay hold on and then all <laughs> of a sudden it's, it fixed itself i was like okay great that I mean, that's what i should get here this this has been the f herb fr freeze season been like in my mouth and like, like this voiceover like, yeah, it's um, like the kung fu movies 
Did you do that kung fu movie? Did you do the King Kong? What's the one yeah. with the dinosaur in Japan? Godzilla. 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 Yeah. So it's all right, folks. We move forward here. We figure it out and we improve and we move forward. So mm -hmm. we'll do better ones. Grow and learn. That's maybe, what we do. Maybe we'll get a better co host. Yeah, I'm looking for a new co host. Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good. Please. <laughs> <laughs> that one too, please. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, let's let's get into it. It's time for some. Dude, you you can't like you're stealing my my mojo here. <laughs> All right, it's time for some automotive news. <laughs> All right. Okay. Automotive you, news. You want to go first? Take us off. No, no. Ladies first. Ladies. I'm a gentleman. Um. So remember the episode we were? Was it the Mike Bogle episode where we were talking about the airbag recalls? And you were like, "It's like yeah. bullets aimed at your face." Remember I know. That? It's it's crazy. I mean, look at the Takata thing. Those are bullets essentially is what it is that are that are projected at your face and what are they at like 60 percent or something like yeah. that like the, and and that's people. been around for almost what about 10 years now dude yeah dude you're gonna die man go get this fixed and you cannot get these people in the no. yeah and people are like ah, i'll just worry about it i'll do it later um takata airbag deaths prompt stellantis to warn owners to park 275,000 vehicles. So apparently there's been a couple or more deaths to the point where Stellantis is like, for the love of everything holy, stop driving your cars. Um, two additional deaths linked to exploding. That's a big one. I was going to say that's a big one for me because I, I was working for one of the Toyota distributors um, are one of the peaks of these of these uh, recalls of this recall in particular, and I used to um, you know go visit with service uh, service managers and um, you know we've we've had these um, uh, programs right that they could subscribe to to get this information out to people with like omni channel solutions with mail and phone calls and all this other stuff, and it's just crazy the amount of people that would pass on getting this stuff fixed or they, they, they wouldn't show up. It's like, dude, it's free. It's crazy. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you that I used to have a car that needed the airbag. And I remember years ago asking my service writer, not at my current store. I can't remember where it was. And they were like, ah, that's not something you really have to worry about because you live in the desert. So yeah so i'm yeah. saying like it's not just there is that jerry no no way <laughs> not jerry not at my okay. current store jerry wouldn't do that jerry goes charity stop panicking no he, well, and this one he'd be like panic panic <laughs> some of those mailers no you said that some of those mailers had like a baby in a crib <laughs> like by itself and stuff and it said like you know you, like basically i'm paraphrasing but it said like don't leave your family without you sort of a deal because you could die from this <laughs> and i'd be like dude <laughs> talk about <Yeah. laughs> you might as well put a i think it'd be more effective if you put a guy like on the steering wheel like this with like bullets coming to his face <laughs> you know what i mean like i was like dude. <laughs> Uh, we laugh, but it's it's, but it's, dead it's not a laughing matter. Old people are dying. It says that they have um, the Stellantis, the company, has generated nearly 210 standard and first class letters, courier deliveries, emails, text messages, and the and phone calls and home visits to get people to bring their damn cars into the damn store. Oh yeah, that's right. I've heard of. Um um on uh, off-site programs or they'll go either pick up your car or they'll go to your house to do the 
the the to get the job done. And so people and, and guess what? People still don't sign up to do it. Mm -hmm. It's not good, folks. But I mean, they'll do all kinds of things that they know are going to kill them. So true that. Speaking of speaking of death, <laughs> what's a terrible thing? <laughs> well, well. <laughs> Dude, let's talk about the Tesla manslaughter case. Ooh, yeah, this is a good one. <laughs> now I feel bad that one. was my segue. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to talk about this. Well, um, set set it up so for those who don't know. For those who don't know, there was a guy. He was driving a car, a Tesla. Comes off the freeway in California. He had the autopilot on. And he's coming off the freeway and he blows through a stoplight and kills two people in a Honda Civic. The article that I read pointed out in one of those, Herb always says that I have the weirdest little bits of knowledge. They were on their first date, the couple, um, and they died. And wow, yeah, so the manslaughter case is in Los Angeles right now and it's pretty big because it can set precedent go for it so okay a couple of questions and i don't know if, if they say that in the article was it autopilot or fsd operating on autopilot okay so autopilot unlike uh, full self-driving is basically you you're in the car but you the car is pretty much driving, you know, driving itself on a straight line, but it doesn't do anything. You can't switch. It doesn't switch lanes. It doesn't auto stop or anything like that. Unless, unless there's a car in front of you, then it'll come to a stop, but it's, it doesn't stop at the lights or anything like that. So, um, and this is not like, against Tesla. This is against the guy that was driving the car. Tesla is right. Not and my, that's my, that would be my question, right? Is, how how can this be this guy's fault if he if uh, I, the only thing okay i digress the only way that this is manslaughter is if this guy's on his phone or not or sleeping or you know what i mean because other than that how does that i don't i don't i just don't understand how well, can he not have hit break at the light you know what I'm saying? Like he must have been distracted. He must have been doing something else and not paying attention to the road. And I don't know. I'm speculating. I don't want to. I don't want to, like, you know, speak without without knowledge. But I, there's there's just no way. I, I don't. Do, do they mention that in the article? Mm -mm. It does say, um, the adjunct professor at Georgetown University Law School, um, who specializes in laws governing self driving cars just an interesting niche to specialize in says who's at fault man or machine the state will have a hard time proving the guilt of the human driver because some parts of the task are being handled by tesla right but the only way that that tesla falls into that is if if it was self-driving right but it also in my says, opinion another attorney says um the attorney representing the families in the lawsuit um, said, I can't say that the driver was not at fault, but the Tesla system autopilot and the Tesla spokespeople encourage drivers to be less attentive. And that's the, that's the crux right there. Whether or not he was being less attentive, was he being less attentive because he was encouraged to be so by the company that sold him the car? Yeah, I don't know, man. It's 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 definitely an interesting case because of where we're going as far as transport, where transportation is headed. Um, so it'll be interesting for those reasons and precedents, like you mentioned earlier. But the other thing that comes to mind, and this is the more, I don't know, sinister or cynical side of me, if you will. But are they doing this just so that they can go go and go into a civil case against Tesla? Oh. I am sure you know that I mean? that is a motivator. Absolutely. Does that make the, the people wrong? No, absolutely. It doesn't make them wrong. But yeah, of course, if it was like, hey, my 1998 
whatever. I don't even know a 1998 car. Well, but hold on before you leave that thought, because it, it's not, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay. So if the driver would have killed this, it would have had the same accident in an ICE vehicle. Well, it's you know not I mean? the ICE vehicle, and it's not the electric vehicle. It's the autopilot. Well, okay, that's a good point. And that's the but, thing. It says in here, where does it say it? That this will, the precedent that they are looking to set is whether the technology is going, has advanced. It could be a test case for whether the technology has advanced faster than legal standards, which is kind of a scary thing for them to be doing a test case on. Because let's say, hypothetically, that they find that technology is advancing faster than the law can keep up with, then they can arguably say that they can. That but that's always the case, higher. Charity. That's all it, it opens an entire argument for whether or not you should be able to advance faster than the law. That's that's always the case. So I don't see that they always advance faster than the law. But this is that that sentence implies that if it's a test case about technology advancing faster than law, then the flip side of that is that technology shouldn't be allowed to advance faster than law. Yeah, but how do you do that? Scary. You don't, you don't, you, 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 you install growth and progress. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Progress. But it, that's why but it's kind I of don't want to lose my thought that I had earlier. So if this, if this person was on autopilot, regardless, doesn't matter, right? If, if the only way that this happened is if this guy's distracted and if he's distracted, it's on him. It's not on the company or the manufacturer of the vehicle. So mm -hmm. I don't see the ridiculously see. fun to me right now. That's not the, the counter argument to that is that he was encouraged by a multi million dollar, billion dollar company to be less attentive. So is he at fault for doing what he was encouraged to do? And then they cite um, that Tesla or Elon Musk had said, Mm. that in September, Elon Musk said that he believed Tesla had a moral obligation to roll out what he calls full self-driving software, even if it was not perfect and Tesla were sued because doing so could potentially save future lives. Right, but so again, Tesla saying, saying, like, like the argument is that Tesla is saying, we know that this is risky and we're going to roll it out anyway. And we know that we're probably going to get sued. So great. But you're going away from my point that I'm trying to develop here. Okay. If this person was in an ice car on his phone, not inside an EV that quote unquote, like you said, um, promotes or encourages people to be, and I don't like to say that because I, I, I drive an EV and I'm not encouraged to be distracted. I, 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 never, you know, so that's, to me, that's, that's BS, but you know, let's just say this guy's in a nice car on his phone. Then what's the argument? He's just a distracted driver. There's no, there's no, you know, okay, that's the counter it's, argument. It's so pretty two, cut and dry. So your two arguments are, he was a distracted driver by because he was encouraged by the company to be a distracted driver. So who is at fault? Him for being a distracted driver? That's a but hard. But that's the to thing. Say. That's Hang the on, thing. Let that... me finish. Him, him for being distracted, or the company for encouraging it. And then the other argument is, the law is the law. You were a distracted driver, and you broke the law. Period. End of story. Right, but my it my my, my gripe right with this, with the way that this is being set up, is that they're bringing Tesla into it, mm -hmm. and it's that's not that doesn't make any sense unless the guy was like on the, uh, lost my my voice there. Unless the guy was like on the monitor, like doing stuff, and then you know. But if this guy's on his phone or on a phone call or doing all the other things that you can do on an on a on a ice vehicle or a vehicle that doesn't have all these, these distractions, then, you know, 
it, if it's reckless driving, it's reckless driving on, and that's the driver's responsibility. Nobody else's. Okay. Yes. But then that calls into question the other one argument, which is, is technology advancing faster than the law? And if it is, should that be stopped? Because and the answer to that question is obviously yes. Obviously people are dying. Yes, it all, but it always is advancing faster than the law. Always. Right. And every single industry and every single realm, it not, this isn't just relegated to the, to the automotive space. Like it's happening like that always. And it always will. Otherwise, it's going to um, slow down growth. Like if, if there's a law that says you have to create law before you develop technology, then it's over. And I think that that's all of those points right there are why this case is being watched. Who's at fault, the company yeah. or the person? And if the company is at fault, why? And what It'll be an interesting case. And want to, yeah, and want to watch and see how how that's going to how that turns out. But, but the it's, lawyer. Um, um so my. Ex-husband is a lawyer, and when he was in law school, he said one of the one of his professors one time said that sometimes you find cases, and when the person is talking to you, all you can hear in your head is cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> this, this is one of them. I'm sure that That's the lawyer funny. who got this case was like, "Yeah, I'll take it." <laughs> oh yeah. Well, if he's doing it pro bono, but if, if he's, he's getting paid. It, but anyway, let's move on. So here is our um, weekly market data brought to you by Lot Links. Okay, so new inventory sales on a plus 11.8% the last week. Uh, used inventory sales uh, plus 5.4%. Shopper value changed plus 9.7%. Shopper engagement changed. Um, uh, negative 3.4% inventory count 79.3%. So basically what this says, we had more new cars in, in the month of October than we have, um, in the, in the past, the, 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 in the past, say in the last year, same time period. Also, we had an increase in used car sales, which, you know, I would argue a lot of that has to do, uh, with, with what happened on the on the new car side. And then we still have shopper engagement or shopper volume, but the engagement is going down. So what does that mean for you? Less leads, less website visits. Um, but what's really interesting to me is that this is only talking about the number of units sold, but it's not talking about the kick in the you know what that a lot of dealers are seeing right now. Yeah, they're selling the volume, but at a loss, right? So you're, I'd be shocked if a lot of dealers uh, last month didn't see per perhaps an increase in volume compared to last year, but it was probably the first or, or you know, one of the first um, months where they started to see decreases in, in front end gross. So what does that mean? Well, it means two things. There's still demand, right? There's still shopper volume out there, but you, we have inventory inventory pricing going down. So the inventory that you have or that you've been holding on to, I don't know, 30, 60 days is starting to lose its value. So there's a lot of dealers out there that are trying to get greedy and say like, no, I'm going to hold my price and wait so that I can get that to, you know, mm -hmm. so I can make my $2,000 per copy or whatever. And folks, I'm telling you, that's a mistake. Get rid of that inventory right now that you have that's sitting there. Whatever you need to do, move it, make it go away. Be two things are going to happen. One, obviously, it, it helps you with um, back end money and uh, building loyalty and bringing customers through the service drive and your, your recondition and your, your used car operation is going to benefit from that, which ultimately makes the whole operation benefit. But number two is, like I said, prices are coming down. 
right? So it, you can buy now in the market at more realistic prices, which still may be a little inflated, but it's still better than they were la this same time period last year. So well, and <clears throat> we all knew that this was going to happen at some point. We've been having this conversation for a while. Yeah, buy right now. And then is the market going to come back down? Probably. And then you're going to have to offload really fast. We all knew that this was coming. It's time. Right. Yes, but here's my thing and what I've been talking about from a consumer standpoint. It's been over two years, so our behavior has changed. There's a lot of UCMs out there that are thinking like, no, this is the new deal. We're going to make this much money forever, and that's not the case. It's time to get back to reality. Here's the other thing on the marketing side. If you're not adjusting your prices and there's dealerships in your market that are, that are velocity customer or velocity philosophy type dealers, they're, they are moving their prices down aggressively. And that means that you're, you're going to be a lot more expensive in the market. So yes, you may have inventory, but if like that episode we did with JT, what's, what's, what's marketing? It's the cost of, um, an overpriced and underwhelming product, mm -hmm. right? So, and you're, you're going to be driving all this activity as far as views and stuff on your website, but you're, you, it's not going to convert to sales on the other end. And so now you're going to think about, now you have to think about, is it my, my internal processes? What's going on? Why are we getting all this activity and we're not moving cars? So, um, I, and just your price. That, oh yeah. And Yeah. And you got to watch your sales floor. They're all in the habit of saying, if your sales floor is anything like mine, oh, we can pre-purchase something. Yeah, sure. We can definitely look at a new car coming in. You got to watch them and make sure that they're not saying that and that they're moving the damn cars on the freaking lot. That's all I have to say about uh, No, yeah, for sure. <laughs> no question. Um, yes. I, I think that we, I think that we're still, we're in the, on the high cloud and we're not mm -hmm. looking at reality and, um, it's not going to get any easier. I was reading this, uh, Cox automotive study the other day. And I think I mentioned this where I referenced this in our last episode, but for the past 10 weeks, wholesale values have come down 1% a week. That means that that car that you had 10 weeks ago, if you still have it today in your lot, is worth 10% less. And they're predicting that that's going to continue to go down. Because, look, it's very simple. You're high here, right? This is the height of the market. This is the low side of the market or the average or whatever you want to call it. If you Everybody were to draw a line looking, right there, yeah. Luis, draw a line there if you can between my hands, right? So you're up here at this point or at this point. And eventually, can you make it so that it traces, right? Something like this. So eventually, it's going to get to the to the normal price, right? So what are you doing? You're just, you know, I'm seeing a lot of dealers at their average price. The average price that they're selling their vehicles right now is in the 95 to 97 percent, but they start at like 110 percent, mm -hmm. and it takes them like 30 to 60 days to get down. And if it, it, that's not going to work, man, like that that you're going to end up with a bunch of cars or you're going to have to wholesale at a loss. Just, you know, I can't stress enough. Look at your pricing right now. Get your pricing in line. We had great times. Let's adjust. Let's move the inventory and then go back into the market and acquire some new inventory that has more realistic values. Anyway. Anyway. All right. Anything let's else? see what else we got. Here's one that uh, I wanted to mention. Toyota rebounds again. Ford, Ford Honda slide. Hyundai Kia advanced third straight month. Uh, some October sales heights uh, uh, saw rose to 14.9 million units. Toyota ended the month with just a 20-day supply. EV sales rose 101% mm. at Kia, 50% of uh, at Ford. Uh, or I'm sorry, 50% of four retail sales came from pre-orders and Subaru was its biggest, uh, uh, saw its biggest sale gains since the spring of 2021. So a um, couple of interesting things here. Uh, obviously, Toyota is, 
they're navigating the situation really, really well. And we saw an article about Toyota's uh, pricing, didn't we? We, we were going to mention on, on this. Yeah. So let me find it. There's a lot of dead air in our in automotive news today. Well, uh, Luis, clean it up. Put uh, put like some some music in between. Oh, put the Jeopardy music in between. Can you put do, the do, Jeopardy do. music in? Oh uh, yeah, probably not. Anyway, you it's in your. I texted it to you. No, no, I know, but did you? You to yeah, I, mean, it I had to find it. Toyota is planning price hikes, still deciding how high to go. I feel like that's like the Fed is planning interest rate hikes, still deciding another where they want to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Toyota is looking to in increase pricing at a limited by customer at a rate limited by customer expectations. Um, the expected increases are coming after the company experienced regional operating losses in its fiscal year. Um, and then they said that they are going to, um, they're dropping off a lot of their, what are they, the cost of entry is higher. So they like dropped off the, the L out of the Corolla lineup, which is the bottom one. So you have to buy higher. And then they're going to increase smaller amounts, but more often. So they're slow right. boiling the shit out of the consumer right now. And then this is my <laughs> favorite line. Death taxes and rising car prices, three unending guarantees. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's good. I was explaining so to my anyway, mom so that we had a capstone on our showroom floor that with all of the things, it was like an, we had to ship it across the country. So by the time we were done, the customer had paid like $100,000 for that. My mom, I thought she was gonna have a heart attack. My first <laughs> condo that I ever bought was $79,000. Man. Back in my day. Those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> and then you look back and you're like, why the hell did I sell that? <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> so 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 that one that's a good recap here for this the what 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 we just read here on the uh, that you know. I just love their strategy. I think that they're looking at things from uh from all these different angles including the EV side of things that we've talked about a couple times. Kia's uh number here at uh, EV sales rose 101%. To me that's a that's a good one because it talks about the competitive natures of EVs. And then mm -hmm. there's going to be, obviously, with all these other manufacturers, it's just um, capitalism as, at its best, right? There's going to be more options, which is going to be driving the, the, the car of these, pr the, the price of these cars down. And it makes it more realistic for it to become, um, you know, to hit some of these, these benchmarks that we have for, for, for these vehicles and for the shift, right? Uh, uh, for this transportation mode shift uh and um uh, let's see there's another one here bro there's two more that i want to talk about okay here general motors delays north america ev production goal by six months so what did i say what did i say what did i say you know, like, yes, it's easy for you to talk about or it's easy for these manufacturers to say we are going to do this or we're going to move to this by this date and time. It's another thing entirely to execute and actually get it done. I mean, I'm not I'm not knocking GM. I, lo I love their efforts. I we, we covered an article here a couple episodes ago where they invested, I think it was 60 million dollars into mm -hmm. a facility in Michigan to, you know, to for EV production or something like that. Um, and there's no question that these efforts are being made, but it's a mon monumental undertaking to, um, you know, to, to just kind of change like the, something out of nothing. No, it's just to, sh to, to shift the infrastructure yeah. that we have with gas stations and, and, and all that stuff to charging stations. Um, you know, like, uh, I've been, I, I, so I've had 
just to give you give some context and an example i've had these specific charging stations in my route that have made my commute super simple um and then the other day i went to charge my car where i always do and the, the charging station was gone not where? there anymore which one yeah by the convention center there across it's the not there anymore no 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 information no nothing it's just completely gone and i was like dude what the so um you know making these things creating this infrastructure is is a pretty big deal man in these time did um, they just move it i have no idea um and these 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 uh time uh, these deadlines excuse me i don't know man it just seems some of these seem a little unrealistic um here's here's another one a drop in used car prices burn us auto dealers but it's but it's good sign for feds again we were just talking about this like if you're holding price man like you know, that's a mistake get rid of the inventory go back into the market buy a current pricing and just watch as things come back down to to normal so Make sure you have enough inventory to, you know, because what else, what are you going to, if you're relying on trades, man, forget it, right? So you have to be buying, but you can't buy and pump vehicles into your, into your flow when you have these cars that, you know, you're, 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 you're trying to hold so that you don't take these hits, which no, you're going to take anyway. That you lot, a couple of episodes ago, we had talked about how I had started hearing um, about dealerships that weren't taking they won't sell you a new car without a trade. Oh, if you're not in the local market or something like one that? One of the one of our competitors, I just caught a customer called me and said, I'm not gonna buy from them because they won't take they won't sell me a car. He had a vehicle that he had put on order. And then when the vehicle came in, they told him he couldn't have it because he didn't have a trade. Right on. Wow, that's crazy. Anyway. That's my, that's my <laughs> review brought to you by lot links. Anyway, charity, any, anything else for automotive news from you? No, that's it. All right. We still have two more of these to do. Block post of the week. All right. What is our block post of the week? We are actually resurrecting a block post for this section because I think it's, it Relevant. falls in line with our guest to a certain degree. And it's all about, um, does your website convey the experience that you want it to convey? Mm -hmm. and what, I, what, we, what we're talking about there basically is if you look at your digital experience, which is, which is achieved through your website, is that the same as the in-store experience that our customers are going to have? And a lot of that has to do with different things. Um, but what, what I, what I really wanted to focus on, because we're going to be talking to Peter Duff, Duffy from dealer image, excuse me, is photos and that representation that you have that first view that customers are going to have when they're looking at cars on your lot. So for example, um, we often forget, man, that we're selling a product, you know, with all the, all the talk about experience and, and, and digital this and digital that, and um at the end of the day man we're selling a product a commodity a a a, 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 a something that customers are going to look at and be attracted to and i cannot believe in 2022 how um bad of a representation we still do to to show that to to our audience like i don't know charity what are your thoughts on that uh, my first thought especially when it comes to the imaging is you've we've all seen it where you go onto a website and somebody has taken in a vehicle and done some quick video or bleh, quick images before they send it off to get it cleaned up and you're it's just the dirtiest damn car you've ever seen and if your digital experience is supposed to reflect or allow your customer to feel as if they are having an in-person experience is that the in-person experience they're going to have they're going to walk in and they're going to see fries in the back of the car that's sitting on the front line no that's not so it should not be the experience that they have 
if your car isn't ready to show, you don't put it on don't the Don't show it. Yeah. That's my, it's such an unpopular <laughs> opinion. Whenever I talk to dealers about this, like I have a lot of groups now that are like, no, I want all my cars in the inventory. And I'm like, dude, you don't have the car to sell. I don't care. I want all the car because I want the activity. Okay. And then I show up to find the car and it's like, oh yeah, we don't have it. Mm -hmm. And the customer's like, what the hell? And then the you know customer I mean? who is already suspicious of us accuses us, accuses us of bait and switch. And then you are one, you're setting yourself, your sales guy up to get, to have a really bad experience at work. And that's not going to make him capable of selling cars. Let's say it's the first person he meets at 9 a.m., on a Friday morning and he gets screamed at because we are quote unquote bait and switching him because the car wasn't ready. That sales guy's off to, he's got a, I, I don't even know a phrase to put in there. He's had a bad day. His day is going to be worse. I tell my team all the time, set yourself up for a win at the very beginning of the day and your whole damn day will be better. So set everybody up for a win guys. Yeah, for sure. I, 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 like I said, this is, I, I get such pushback on this, like real, like, oh dude, you're crazy. Like that's, that makes no sense. But if your recon process or, or if you're, if you're a days to lot is three to five days, which is kind of where you should be at. Why would you compromise by putting shitty pictures of a car outside of your shop with shadows in it? Well, but I, you know, you, you know, I get the whole like, well, you used to, you, you always preach to, to get the vehicle, the pictures on the car right away. Yeah. Good pictures, dude. Good pictures, not shitty pictures. Like, oh, you're, let not, me go going and share and share. A, you're not going onto a dating app with shitty pictures. <laughs> so no, like, dude, if it takes you three or three to five days, maybe in this, in this market, that's a little bit more, let's say 10 to 12 days or whatever. Okay, take that risk, man. Take you know, I don't know, I don't know what to tell you. Like, take um, work on your recon process. Make sure that that stuff is better. Work on getting your vehicles front line faster. Pre-order parts. Pre-order filters. The 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 common stuff so that your vehicles are not sitting there and waiting for these for these for these parts that have been hard to find during the during these times. You know, streamline your processes, but don't don't just go and put pictures up there bad pictures just to have pictures on the thing like it's like we overtrained some of these dealers on on putting nice pic or putting pictures on their vehicles from day one it's like yeah it, it it helps to show the actual car but you still have to think about it from a marketing standpoint like dude they want to see a car that they want to buy nobody wants to see a dirty car and if you are going to do that because you're you have fomo because that's what this industry the industry has a lot about a lot of excuse me is this fear of missing out. So if you have FOMO because of your pictures, then don't take pictures of the inside of the car. Just take five photos from the outside, do mm -hmm. it in a controlled environment or space so that there's no shadows and you know what I mean? Nothing that looks like crap. And then put those photos up there. But don't just, you know, why, do, why are you settling for mediocrity just to have photos on there, but you put shitty photos of your car? Like, I don't get it. And that's why that's why I'm, I'm I'm excited to have this conversation or I really enjoyed the conversation with Peter because we already had it. But um, because he offers he offer uh, he offers a process, he gives you the opportunity to train your staff on, on certain things, angles and things of that nature. And then he 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 can put these images on the background of your of your photos that really accentuates and highlights the vehicle, which is what we should be thinking about from the, from a marketing standpoint, it's like, yeah, let's go to market with a shitty car or with the, sh the, the shitty images of this car. No, man, let's wait until the car is ready or let's have a process to take some good photos, partner up with somebody like, like Peter or do it in your internally, but do it well and take the best possible photo that you can to, to take that vehicle out into the market. Amen. Anyway, that's my, that's my preach. Now more than ever, businesses need more efficient sales. 
That's why thousands of dealerships trust Four Eyes to help with things like automated inventory email updates and ensuring all of your leads get into the CRM. To try Four Eyes for free, visit foureyes.io slash dealer talk. That's foureyes.io slash dealer talk. So without further ado, let's go into the episode that we previously, previously recorded with Mr. Peter Duffy. I hope you enjoy and um, let's take it away. Hey man, super excited to have you on the show, dude. So um, we kick things off here with an intro. So tell us about you. Uh, my name is Peter Duffy. I'm the CEO of uh, Dealer Image Pro. Um, we are a you know in-house photo, video, and 360 company for auto dealers in the auto space, uh, among some other things that we work on too. But that's generally our the guts of our operation. Um, we're based out of Sacramento, California, although we are pretty remote now. Everyone's kind of working in their own space too. Um, but uh, yeah, um, I'm happy to be here. So thanks for having me. Right on, man. Cool. So d did you, um, have you, have you worked at a dealership before? Or, um, well, like I thought you'd never ask. Her. <laughs> 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 never had that. This question. is like the third, you know, this is like a third podcast this week where I have to go through this and I love talking about myself charity. So let me, let me, <laughs> so, uh, basically I started out as a poor photographer looking for a job to kind of, you know, pay the bills and stuff. And, um, I found this one opportunity with a dealership in Oxnard, California, where they had built a studio and didn't really know how to, you know, take pictures of cars. And this is like, that wait a second. I have to interrupt, man. Oxnard, yeah. California. Do you know my, my homie, um, selling cars like candy bars? He's from I, yeah, California. I've seen that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we chat a little bit on LinkedIn and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't know him personally, cool. but obviously through the friendly banter we have at, um, at, uh, LinkedIn, of course. So right on. anyway, I, I go over to this dealership and they go, Hey, you know, we don't know what we're doing here, but we built this studio and I knew right away from photography perspective that they just didn't have enough light. And so a car is huge. Right. And so they have this big studio, but not enough light. It's very dark in there. And, um, and so I went in there, shot a couple cars. They liked it. It was all good. And we, or I got that a job for like a whopping $75 a car. So uh, I started in the auto industry in 2009 as a starving photographer, basically. There was a dealer in Oxnard, California that built a studio and didn't really know how to uh, light cars, basically. So I went home and got all the lights I had in my garage as a photographer, came back. I'm talking like my desk lamp, you know what I mean? And I just brought <laughs> everything back. And I shot two cars for them and they liked what they saw, obviously. And at the time, um, they hired me to do each car for like a whopping $75. So it was like, that's unheard of, right? And I, yeah. I never even got that price later on. It was really just like the beginning of something new. Because at the time, 2009, it was still... I you didn't just How many cars did you do for 75 bucks a pop, man? Do like 60 or 80. And what? Uh, yeah. So for me, that was like, you know, whatever that adds up to 3,500 bucks or something. But it was like, whoa, I'm getting paid money. Right. So at the same time, I'm also a licensed mortician. So I was still working in a mortuary. And so I'm like embalming bodies at night and then I'm coming over and shooting cars during the day. I see charity. Man, that is such a that, dynamic career. Yeah. I have a, a, a degree in mortuary science. So, so, and I had been a mortician for like 14 years. So anyway, um, I get into this and then they give me another one and another one. And I see the writing on the wall and we build basically dealer image pro until 2016. I think we had 23 photographers and 40 dealerships and it was like a whole thing. But it was still very uh, landscape kind of business, right? Like I do work for you, you give me a little money. There was no real like, the value was there because I came and did my job, but it wasn't anything that was scalable, um, at least in that sense at the time. So around 2016, we do, um, we kind of moving into some new offices and stuff and 
probably smoking a little weed or something like that. And one of somebody goes, <laughs> hey, you know, we really, you really got to get the dealer to do their own pictures and then you can edit them or something. And then it was like a light bulb. Right. And, uh, I, I came up with the wireframe guideline, you know, uh, app application that we have now, uh, called photo assistant. And so fast forward to today and we have, I don't know, hundreds of dealers in like four or five countries that use photo assistant, um, daily. So, so, so t tell me more uh, about that because yeah. I'm, I'm super, super interested. So, um, the, the, the way that it traditionally has worked for, 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 you know, this is the way, you know, for the stores that I consult with is they have a company like car keys or somebody like that, that comes sure. out, they have their team. I like car keys is pretty cool. They're, I think they're local here to Vegas. So, you know, um, it's not a plug. It's just that they're the most. No, I've heard of them. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, the closest to me, but they're, they're kind of cool because they put these printers and stuff in these cooling mechanisms in their cars. You yeah, know what I mean? Bet. So that that's like yeah, that's you know. overheat over there. Right. It's, it's so hot, right. So, but th but that's what it is, right? You go out, they get you know they have two photographers per store. That one you know brings the car out, the other one shoots it. They do a video, and then the next, and then that's how it's two photographers how, per car. That's yeah. the first time I heard that, but yeah. So, so um, usually that's called in our space is called the visiting vendor, right? So if you have Herb's Toyota and you sell 200 cars a month and you have a visiting vendor that comes around three days per week or whatever it is, and they shoot your cars and put them online, it's great. And it's a great situation for you because you don't have an employee or whatever reasons you have um, for doing that, as opposed to something like us. And we used to be that guy, by the way. We used to be the visiting vendor, right? So mm -hmm. photo assistant in the app itself is not just the novelty of like being able to photograph cars in a consistent manner using wireframe guidelines, but it's all the stuff we learned up until that point that would put a tool in the hands of someone like car keys even that goes, oh, this makes things way easier. I'm just photographing, getting video clips, doing a 360. I have a in live inventory list, all the stuff on board on a 12 megapixel iPad Pro. I push send and everything goes off to get edited and quality controlled and all the stuff that Dealer Image Pro does. Today. So, so, so I'm, I'm sorry, I just, I'm for my own no, brain. Okay. Um, the way it works is somebody at the dealership goes and takes a picture, not the best picture in the world. They just picture the car and they send it to you and you guys make it look dope. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they have a very strict set Way. of wireframe guidelines and a very strict set of training. And in fact, if you do send the <laughs> picture, we're going to send it right send back it to back. you. Not what you <laughs> like, oh, okay. So, I was going to say, dude, because. We gave you or listen to the yeah. quality control texts and emails <laughs> that you're getting. And oh, by the way, we're going to tell your general manager because you're not paying attention. So there's like, <laughs> we cannot get away with that in this day and age. No. <laughs> Peter, I don't get told no very often at my show, man. Like that was like. <laughs> I'm just like, letting you know. No. <laughs> so, that, but that, that was awesome. Said, if you take a series of pictures, even myself, who's done thousands of cars, I still take crooked pictures every now and then because I'm not perfect. Sure. Right? Like nobody is. So them going through the editing process is doing two things. One, it's like straighten, color correction, quality control. But that quality control is like, are there paper floor mats? Are the steering wheels crooked? Are they bad compositions? Does this? Did someone get a hold of this iPad and take bad pictures? Because we want to notify someone because that's not what we were hired to do. So there's a huge watchdog thing happening over the top of Photo Assistant. And that's really what people are paying for. I so, have this so, like whole thought process of all of the conversations that I've ever had in at work that are like, for the love of everything, holy, turn your phone. <laughs> the, 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 dude, this is, this is, this is, this, I, I wasn't expecting this. Um, <laughs> I have so many questions. Tell uh, me everything. Ask me anything. Okay. So. First of all, wouldn't it be super dope if you could take shitty pictures and send them to you guys and you guys can make them look super awesome? It's just For like polishing a shirt, buddy. If you have bad pictures, <laughs> oh, you're going to get bad pictures. Like, I'm good, but I'm not God. You know what I mean? Like, we can't make things, you know. So, <laughs> like, bad compositions okay. are bad compositions. And realistically, the real reason for this is 
total dealer customer experience, right? So sure. going back to the same uh, example for Herb's Toyota, if you did have someone just taking bad pictures, let's call them more snapshots, um, are you informing the customer in a way that makes them in the comfort of their own home, drinking wine at nine o'clock at night, shopping for a Toyota Camry? Are you giving them the information that they need to make a buying decision based on price and mileage? Or are you making them salivate enough to want to come in and see that car based on your crappy pictures? And generally speaking, the answer is yes, but not really. So mm -hmm. in the it, what we are really focused on is taking Herb's Toyota in the same example, bringing that in-house to increase your time to market from three days, which is what your visiting vendor is doing, to seven days, which is a half of a year, right? Like if you could bring your cars to market in the window of your store seven days a week instead of three, your buck's up immediately. And then if you could do it immediately in a way that is focused and a solid set of pictures that is consistent across your entire inventory. Now you're also giving your customers what they need to make a buying decision. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I yeah. Um, okay. Let's so see. yeah, no, that makes sense. I, I, and I, I like the, the Herbs Toyota, by the way, that's uh, let's manifest that. I like it. Sounds good. Herbs BMW might be better. Yeah, there, yeah. there you go. Um, so Okay, so quality control, I get that, makes sense. Let's talk about the future of, of, of photos for a second. Okay. Um, I, I have this ongoing conversation currently with a, the, somebody that, uh, that oversees a, a, a major group that's kind of resistant to, to going in that direction. Um, do you so think that three, three, no, like 360 and video walk arounds and those sorts of things, yeah. What are your what are your thoughts on that? Do you think that eventually everybody's going to have to play in that sandbox? Um, what, what's your what's your take on that technology per se? So let's talk about the fundamental thing first. Number one, if there is no pictures of a car, just the pictures on right. a car, on an SRP, on a VDP. I mean, the percentage of people that click on it is very small. Like we're talking sure. about. Percent. And those studies yeah. have been done by Cox Automotive, not by me. So I'm not the only one saying it. It's a fact, right? So then let's say that 360s, video is video, right? Like we've all lost a Sunday on YouTube, like video is fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but 360s are, you know, like fun to use and keep the customer interaction going on on a VDP, no doubt about it. But 100%, without a doubt, you can take this to the bank, photos bring a car to market. Sure. Hands down. So shortening the time that you take a car in on trade to the point where it has even 10 photos online where someone's going to click on it is your time to market. So getting a full set of pictures on there that cover the entire vehicle are the most important thing any dealer can do to bring any kind of marketing to their dealership and represent their brand. Like that's no literally, if you're on cars.com and you're looking up Camrys in a 20 mile radius. It, your eye stops at the best Camry that there is usually. Then you look over at price and mileage. And if it matches your clicking, I still don't know where your dealership is. But that photo is representing the brand of Herb's Toyota. So let me go there. Then I'm going to your website. Now I have everything. So 360s are fun. And they definitely increase time on site. Videos are great, especially when they're done well. Picture slideshows are bullshit. You know it and I know it. Mm -hmm. But good video is great. But photos take a car to market. So there's, there's not going to be any debating that until all the cars in the world have a moving picture on cars.com. Like right. But so so, that, that, so that, that's why I wanted to start there because um, I agree. I mean, obviously, we're at the end of the day, we talk about the experience and all this other crap. But... Um, we're still selling up. We let's not forget we're selling a product, right? Yeah, sure. uh, so, and that's the first thing that's going to get the customer. It's going to be price and what that car looks like. You want to, Bob? You sound just like me right now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, but is that is the photo technology advancing? Are we in a place of? Are we at a tipping point where we're transitioning from just images to engagement, walk around, three hundred and sixty? Is that the next thing that every dealer should have set their eyes on or let's fix, let's get the, the photo game 
tight, and then let's worry about that later. I think I think photo game is first for any dealership that doesn't have good photos, right? That's just like if we can get you there, then we can add video very easily. Like our video clips are in between our photo uh, guidelines, and it keeps it nice and easy for the person, and they don't even have to be a photographer to use our our product, use Photo Assistant. But then you add on 360 after that, or it just all goes into the same training, which we've done. All three of those things are great. Not every dealer does them. I've had plenty of dealers that come to me because we give away 360. We don't care. That's how much we are devoted to photos. We're like, yeah, sure. If you want 360, we'll just give it to you. So that's like just something that it's more of an add on. Um, but mm -hmm. we've had dealers just say, no, we've tried that. We don't really like that. And, and that's okay. like, so okay. going to the future, just to add to that, the future, future, like let's talk about just like brainstorming. It would be sick to scan a car with an iPad or using the AR kit or something. And there's some of that stuff out there. Um, but in terms of dealerships and higher volume dealerships, it's hard to um, – make that practical for every Honda Civic on your lot, right? Oh, like yeah. new cars, sure, but every used car, do I wanna invest the time in that? I'm just trying to move that thing off my lot, right? Mm -hmm. so, so I think as the technology gets better, we may be in a place like that, but I think we're still three, five years from doing that. Yeah, no, no question. So then here's my other, okay. So, so um, here's my other question for you because this one is one that drives me absolutely insane. Mm. Um, images, photos on a website are the biggest clog or bottleneck or whatever to optimal performance. Yeah. Why? Because the majority, if not all websites that I've ever worked, and I don't care if you're the tippy top recommended by Shift Digital or whatever, or you're the worst, none of the websites that I've ever encountered, maybe I think only one, and I can't even remember the name. All their images are JPEG and yeah. you're loading up thousands of images, JPEG, and they should be WebP. Why don't we have the technology to make images WebP because they're optimally better for the site? It doesn't impact the performance of the website. Why haven't we, why don't we have that technology available? So I got to unpack something else first. And this is, this, so you've been on a website or a VDP where a dealer looks like shot in the studio, photos could be pretty decent, but everything looks just a little pixelated or broken apart, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this phenomenon that happens in the auto industry with all of them, and I won't name names, but inventory management systems, let's call them. Then you have a vendor yeah. for your website, and let me leave those, I'm not going to call anyone out because it's industry-wide. I've talked to sure. many executives. No one's going to fix it. But so we are giving a JPEG at a size that's something like, I don't know, it's perfect resolution. It's this big and everything sharp as a tack. And it's a 212 kilobytes, which is nothing, right? 150 kilobytes. Small, yeah. Very small, but clear, nice picture. Then we're sending that batch of pictures to whatever inventory management system they have. And they typically will downsize them so that they can move them around because they're the ones syndicating everything. Right. So when they get over to the website, now the, the, the larger, small JPEG that is loadable fast that I gave them is now half the size. Then they move it over to the website and they break it apart a little bit because they put like, say, a screen, smaller screen, let's call it, in a mm -hmm. bigger window and stretch the squares. That's the best way I could use to describe the pixels. And so your photos look fuzzy. So the way we combat that is we have what's called an image viewer, which is essentially the window that displays pictures, video, 360, and interacts with the customer in a VDP. We have a script that we put there and we host it so that now we send the photos off to go to wherever you need them to go to for syndication. But then we also are hosting just that window on your VDP for crisp quality photos. So to answer your question, now that you know we have this small education, is I doubt that any inventory management system is going to take a W, whatever you just said, from me. Like a web page, yeah. It's going to be JPEG or nothing. Now it's something we can work towards, and I'm actually interested that you said that because that's a pretty neat um, thing. But 
Why aren't don't, you, why don't you become the first one to export, dude? Because think about it: you put JPEG on a website, and then you run your Lighthouse scan, and its performance is twenty five, no matter what, because all these images are the wrong format for a website. So according you're saying, to Google's best practices. What was the file name? Did you just say a W? WebP. Oh, WebP. I I have heard about this because I think. If I'm not mistaken, our new website with the developers that did it, they did it that way, so everything loads very fast. Um, so it'd be it'd be worth exploring. But realistically, even if I made the format, I'm almost sure that and I could be wrong. But as soon, yeah, as soon as you send it to like HomeNet or something, they're gonna convert. Like, what is this? And then freak yeah. out, and then I'd get in trouble because the dealer would be mad and the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I, it's just, you know, I figured I talked, talked since we're talking images that, would, that I've always wanted to ask that question. I know I, I know, I mean, I'm just going to say it right. And I home net, if, if I'm wrong, you know, let's come on the show and, and tell everybody that I don't know what, the, what I'm talking about, but I think that it's technology legacy, dude. The answer they, that I got when I, the scenario I told you where we're, you know, sending photo feeds and things are being downsized. The answer that I got from everyone is basically that if we took all your photos, you're one company, if we took everyone's photos, we're talking about literally doubling the size because they have the size of our images. Mm -hmm. they, they, you're doubling the size of the amount of bandwidth that is gonna go out. You'd basically break the internet for them. You know what I mean? Because they're not right. used to that kind of bandwidth. So if you did that overnight, even though they could code it or develop it, it would just, the system doesn't have the, you know what I'm saying? Well, yeah, and the, and the code stack that they're using too, because I have, I'm, I don't want to, I don't want to name this company because I know this is this words out of everywhere. I'm like, wow, yeah. I, mean, I don't I, even know these. Words. I'm I have like, this sounds I, fun. There, there's, <laughs> <tell me more. laughs> there's this company out there that I don't, I don't want to. I'm not going to say who they are, but I know they're working on a technology. Their code stack. Isn't, you know, let me just say this. They're not using WordPress and they're using things like React and, um, you, build you know, websites or for this photo. Yeah, for websites. But okay. their, their, their website from the, the examples that I saw takes the JPEG image and their system automatically converts it into a WebP. Cool. Great. So when you run your scans on this website, on the mock ups that I've seen, the performance is you get fireworks on Google. Because okay. every time you get a hundred on everything, they put fireworks. Fireworks in the. No, that it's makes pretty sense. insane. That makes sense. You know, it's it may insane. be. Um, I'll tell you some of the great. So, Deal Inspire um, has been really great. Um, I think their websites are pretty fluid and nice. And yeah, stuff. but they're WordPress. I mean. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, Google owns WordPress, so until. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't know, still, dude. Like. I think I think the that, and we've had this conversation like three times in the season already. But don't you think that these websites should have more than just okay? They're pretty on the front of it, you know, and and that's great. But shouldn't they sure. be doing some other shit on the back end? Like I don't know. I think and I and I don't know, but it might be that Roadster uh, would have something like that. And Roadster, of course, was just bought by CDK, and I don't care about saying this out loud. That's the best thing that ever happened to CDK. I CDK is <laughs> <laughs> um, but like. Uh, but Roadster has been a pretty big player, um, mm -hmm. and all that. And, um, they may be doing that already. Um, but who knows? And then Techion yeah. is obviously at the forefront of great things with their CRM. So, um, I imagine they will branch out into other products as they get bigger too. So you might be, yeah, for they're going to charge you for every absolutely thing that they charge you. I've heard a about Techion that say that it's just a shell. You know how Techion kind of got started, right? It was like Elon, the, Musk's like the Elon Musk dude, right? The, his finance C, his, his C, CFO or something like that. Yeah, yeah the CIO or his technology, his, his chief technology yeah. officer, or something like that. One of them, but it happened because uh, so earlier on, we're talking 2017 ish or so, we got connected with Tesla in some way. And they started putting photo assistant at their distribution centers for consistency. This was like Elon's number one request was like, hey, we want our customers to have the same experience. Because right now they just have a configuration of basically stock pictures for their pre-owned cars on Tesla. Right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and the number one request is where are the photos? 
Americans, basically. So we started with them. It fizzled out because they just did not engage. Like, they just didn't use it. Um, and so during that period of time, I think they saw the auto as this inventory management system for themselves. And it didn't make sense to people that were making electric cars and their own software. So I think that's why he split off and made Techion um, because it was just like he fill, filling a need. Right. So um, that's kind of how that happened. Yeah. I mean, time will tell. I, I, I don't I don't have anything. My 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 it's not qualms or anything like that. I just, um, you know, I think what the last time I checked, they only have like 100 dealers and they're they just have these really big claims. I hope it comes to fruition because I think it'd be great for the automotive industry. But with the 400 million dollar first round, I mean, they're going to have to make that money back somehow. And that means every single thing that they touch, you're going to have to ask money for. Right. It's just the only thing. It's, it's just. Man, yeah. And that's not how the auto dealer world works. Right. Everybody right. wants a discount and everybody wants a, you know, a deal because it's. A deal. Right. So. so, so. <laughs> I don't know. We'll Something see. But sales. anyway, so Im images. Let's 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 keep talking about that because I I um. So I always like to have a takeaway for the for the for the listeners. Yeah. So what would you say are the three three tips that you can leave for somebody that's maybe struggling with their photos? Let's say it's a, it's a small mom and pop dealership, not a group or anything that has all these resources. Or maybe a uh, um, um, independent, a high, you know, kind of almost franchise independent dealer. What would you say are the are three things? Like if you do nothing else, do these three things for to have better photos, which in turn is going to help you turn your cars or, or get more interest on your cars. So whether it helps you get more interest uh, uh, in cars or whatever, it's really about the impression. I mean, obviously you want to sell more cars. And I'm a big proponent of like better photos, make a better experience, sell more cars. But if you had to do one thing, it's take it seriously because it is the one thing that people see that represents your dealership right away. Right. So take it seriously. That's number one. So if you don't, if you have bad photos right now and you know it, like tomorrow, just fix that shit. Like it's not that hard. Right. So secondly <laughs> is um, backgrounds. So a, a uh, a distracting background does not allow the reader psychologically to see something and really digest the product that they're seeing. So if you go on an Amazon, you see the product, right? You see the tool that you are buying against a white background. So it doesn't have to be a white background, but stop using a picture of your dealership because I'm already on your website. You don't need to tell me again, but make it so that it's a clean background. And that can be a neutral colored wall on the property. It can be a green belt, which is less cool, but at least it works and there's nothing in the background, but eliminate trees, car, other cars, poles, every all that stuff. Just do that immediately. And if you did that, just think about it for a second. If you're photographing cars all over your lot crazy, and then one month you turn 60 cars and all 60 cars you have pictures of now have it green behind them or a wall behind them, your website's gonna clean up like really well. Even if the picture itself is bad composition, you're going to have clean. So clean backgrounds is number one. Um, number two, photograph the car or the vehicle in the same way every time. So whether it's a truck, car, SUV, whatever it is, do the same thing for everything um, across the board. And then normal stuff that really doesn't need a suggestion, but do paper floor mats and, mm -hmm. you know, water bottles or the car should be photographed in the same condition you have it in the delivery area of your dealership, right? So don't show me a dirty car because I just want to see the clean one I want to buy, right? So right. those 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 couple of things. And, and if you did that with or without Dealer Image Pro, with or without anyone for that matter, um, it immediate, it makes an immediate difference. So Yeah. I like yep. the I like to comment about the background, and I am seeing more is CGI the right word? Like more background, uh, more fake really. background. Yeah, it's just a it's basically a a cutout green screen or something underneath or something. Um, but there's plenty of companies that do that, you know, with AI nowadays, mm -hmm. um, all included. Um, but yeah, you can you can really there's a there's a ton of backgrounds. Go on iStockphoto.com and put on backgrounds, studio backgrounds, and there'll be 
hundreds of them, pick one and use that from this point forward if you're going to do that. But if you don't want to go through that expense or the time or the whatever, well, hire someone like us, or you would uh, just find a clean background on your property. Like yeah. every, there is a place for everyone. And keep the sun at your back for crying out loud. If you're shooting into the sun, you don't yeah, shoot you see that, you see the the sun at Disney. You turn around and you run them at your back. Like that's how it works, right? You see the shadows in some of the pictures over the car. It's like, dude, or the come sun on, man. Beaming in the in the lens of the camera. You're like, that's I always cool. love the reflection of the photographer. Yeah, well, that one's a little harder. That's a little harder. It but, is. You're right. But, it's but hard. The, to, we yeah. we saw one just the other day, and it it was on the one of the cars on at work and the angle that the guy was holding the camera it was like of the tire and he was what well, we we spent 10 minutes trying to figure out why the hell he'd taken a photo the direction he had taken the photo <laughs> like, there's but, very but, little there's very little things ob objects that you can photograph straight on where mm -hmm. you're not going to get a reflection in a reflective object right like even in the screen of the navigation we see that shot on straight on all the time and then you can see the person but if you just move a little to the left and shoot at an angle which is a more flattering angle anyway mm -hmm. um, usually you're not there so pretty but that's a great well, i think there's a couple of things that happen with that first of all i mean dude if your shadow is in the image and you uploaded that you, you're you should be fired <laughs> like, dude, come on. Like, you're not know seeing that. that you're... It's pretty hot in but Vegas. Dude, dude, so you your gotta, shadow you is move through the cars, man. I don't think I'd fire anyone over it. That's hard. <laughs> right. I, it, at Herb's Toyota, you better believe that if your shadow is on that car, yes. you're gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because it's not that you're like, oh, I made a mistake. You you may obviously made a mistake, and then you replicated that mistake by uploading it online like that. Like, it come happens. on. It happens. So that's number one. <laughs> number two, the biggest thing that I see is that the dealerships that don't, that want to do things internally, they hire people and they don't, they don't hire the right people. Number one, mm -hmm. they hire just kids or whatever, college students or, that don't have any photographic experience. And then, you know, they try to do it on the cheap, I guess is my point. So and that's, they not, saying, hey, do you want to take some two, pictures? There's two things I'm going to push back on there. And, and one, I think you're going to agree with me on. Number one, our system is that like I can get you, if you had no photographic experience or charity, within two days, I can have you shooting a perfect set of photos. No doubt about it. No questions. I've done it in my sleep. It's fine. That's the, actually not even what we focus on because we know we can do it. It's more now operational efficiency and that kind of thing, right? So that right. you do not need to have a talented nor well thought out photographer to do what we are teaching the dealership now to do. However, if, yeah, however, you do need someone who gives a shit, right? Because like, if you uh, just have a kid in there, you, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get what you get and you're going to just basically turn him over. So let's go into the other thing that you just mentioned. And this is the, the I don't want to say farce because that's too harsh of a word, but we can't find any help. Like we just can't hire people. Like, why do you think that is? Because you're why paying you them ten dollars an hour. I do. <laughs> you need That's to pay why. people what they're worth. If at the end of the week the guy is getting his gas you're money right. and his paycheck and that's all he's got, you need to pay people what they're worth, man. Yeah. You know, yeah, no, I, this I, is not a minimal minimum wage job. If you can't pay people washing your dealership after you go to bed at night minimum wage which you can't because you can't get you couldn't get me to empty all your garbage and wash your floor for minimum wage so why would you pay someone minimum wage to shoot your cars which is arguably the most important thing that markets your cars like you need to give them you know i'm not saying they're you know salesman salaries here but give them something that makes them excited to come to work right, right. well and then yeah, to follow up with that correct me if i'm wrong but yeah. my experience with social media is that people think that you just post a couple of things and you're like oh that how much time does that actually take so yeah, i can imagine that, that photography it's like oh, well all you're doing is taking a couple pictures how much time mm -hmm. can that actually take it takes a lot of time bottom <laughs> line is you got to pay people what they're worth and if you're doing something as important as your dealership is taking it your photos in house mm -hmm. start with not super high, but you know, 18 bucks an hour is actually pretty reasonable in terms of right you where know, you should be at. Yeah, no, I totally agree.
we were paying totally people 18 agree. bucks an hour three years ago. So like it's now, three years now and we've had all the inflation. So what does that add up to? Let, let me ask you this. If somebody uses you guys, is there a reduction in that or you still need that element um, on the on the photography side? Um, I mean, like I said, I think what you're paying for is not the skill set of a photographer, which would cost a lot more. Because honestly, if you got a good photographer to use our system, they're going to leave you in six months anyway, because we suck the creativity right out of that shit. Like, it's just like pretty straightforward. <laughs> do this, do this, do this. It's a recipe. And if you do it every time, you get the chocolate cake, right? But any baker is going to be like, well, I want to put cherries. And you're like, nope, don't do that. We're just trying to do this. <laughs> And so they'll leave you. Don't so, get fancy with it. Don't get fancy with it. So it's, <laughs> it's much better to have a coachable individual that likes or cares about what they're doing. And I can pretty much make anyone get a perfect set of photos at that point. Right on. Yeah. Very cool. So we're, we're definitely going to put all, all of uh, Peter's information in the show notes. So if you're wherever you're getting your podcast fix, go to the show notes, connect with Peter. If you want to, do you do demos? Can we do a dealer talk promotion or something for the for the folks that hear you here? The best way to go, we have a really informative website and actually our demo is to go into depth with that. So the best way to do it is dealerimagepro.com. If anyone wants any kind of free consultation or something, they can email me, Peter at dealerimagepro.com where I'll look at a satellite map and say, hey, you should probably be photographing your cars here because the sun rises here, sets in the west, whatever. So I can put out some pointers for them, look at their website, tell them what they need. And that's completely free. I don't mind doing that. Um, yeah, anything like that's good. But I do want to add this. This has been one of the funnest dealer podcasts I've ever been on because, dude, they are so stale. <laughs> they, like, they suck the life out of me, right? So this is a perfect Friday, awesome dealer podcast. So awesome, awesome man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> there, there's a couple questions I have though. Let's, you know, because I want to get your take on this, on this one. So um, I've been hearing and seeing a lot of people rotating the car the other way, where the, the first image goes to the, yeah. pr is that, is that, rec do you recommend that? Or do you think that, that the traditional way Let away from the price in. does it matter so we literally I, had this conversation just the other day we were in a, yeah. a website building image i'm curious way. charity what did they tell you in that website building did they say point the car to the left or the right toward the price of the vehicle towards the price i think dude you read from left to right so when I get to a website and all the cars are pointed left, I'm like, whoa, what, 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 what are we doing? You know what I mean? So it's better, I think, to point all the cars to the right. But here's what happened. Damn it. No, I know. You had okay. dealer. I mean, that's just intuition for me. But I was pushing everybody and they were like, dude, you want me to move every single car the other way? I can't do that. You know why it happened. So Land Rover Jaguar, if you had, let's go to bigger now, Herbs. Auto Group, right? Oh, there you, you got go. Toyota, you got Land Rover, now you got a Porsche store, you got them all. And then you share all this inventory on one, say, omni channel site, which we specialize in, shameless plug there. But so you have all your inventory <laughs> in one place. Now, Land Rover Jaguar compliance says you have to point your cars to the left, but you like them to the right. Now you have an omni channel site where everything is all off. Mm -hmm. So what happened is most people just conceded. And then just pointed everything to the left. And, it, and I think it was Land Rover Jaguar, but I think Porsche kind of did it and it was just off to the races. So, I mean, it is what it is. We just, that's one of our questions when any new dealer comes on board. You want them left or right? And we don't, we try not to meddle. All right. I was wrong. Okay. I, no, I'm not wrong. I just <laughs> like it is what it is. Wait, no, know? I need, this is recording, right? Yes. I think so. I'm saying I was wrong. <laughs> I, 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 you know, from time to time. From hey, time to time. you know what? It wasn't me that you called you wrong, dude. It's whatever class yeah. you took. That, that, that's pretty clever. It's all right because we went from Herb's Toyota to Herb's BMW to Herb's Auto Group. So, you know, we're manifesting that. Now, dude. That's it. <laughs> that's all right. It. The last one, the last one here before I ask you the question that we ask everybody that comes on the show is let's talk a little bit about video. Um, what is your take on video? How is that something that we can leverage do you obviously in the scheme of photos and videos what what has the most priority do you think do you think that photos are still more important than videos 
uh, why and what, what do you see the evolution of that being? Um, I'll lean back to what I said before, where photos take a car to market. And until that sure. changes, photos are the most important thing you can do. Um, video uh, is, like I said before, like, I mean, YouTube's fun. I like going on YouTube University and learning things and stuff. So video is always going to be great. What you do or how you do the video, I think, is the most important. So whether you choose to have it or not, personal preference at this point, um, it shouldn't be any longer than a minute, minute 15 per car. Mm -hmm. um, it shouldn't be shaky and, you know, whatever. Um, it should not be moving pictures at this point because that's just like you are trying to make a video to get video SEOs, which is just boring and just silly. Right. So like actually make it a video. So it should be full motion video. There should be voiceover that's been specific because there's plenty mm -hmm. of services, not only ours, but that do that nowadays. And that those videos should automatically go to your YouTube page to drive up those SEOs. Yeah. So, so video is important. You know, um, we live in a video world. Like, it, no it question. Is. So, yeah. Yeah. Awesome, man. So I, I know I said last question, but here's another one that came to mind when you were speaking is so on websites, you on the mobile version and on the desktop too, but it's not as prevalent. But when you search for your photos, right, you go and there's arrows and you go or you can swipe like this. Yeah. But I'm seeing now some websites where it opens up a carousel and you can actually scroll, which I, I personally really like that. What's your take on that? Um, I actually haven't seen one yet, but it seems like it seems like you should be able to swipe left to right. Um, so it's like a pop up. And then yeah, so you hit the you hit the car and it opens the main image, but then you can scroll through the images with your thumb versus having to like click or swipe like this. But do I, I have know, to I, click one time on the image that I landed on and then it makes a little pop up and then I can scroll through and then X to close yeah. out of it? Yeah, that seems mm -hmm. on a on a phone, that seems pretty pretty great. Uh yeah. I, that's a great feature. I'm learning all kinds of things from you today, buddy. Is it the cool. size of the have I seen this before? I don't know. I've noticed it. That's why I asked the question. Yeah. No. So. Like I said. Anyway, dude. Not kidding. It, it, not only has this been fun and educational for me, but like it's just this is really you, you have something special here. I've been on enough of these to know. And like, thanks, man. <laughs> it's not this fun. You know what I mean? Your, your check is in the mail, sir. <laughs> 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 Don't move it around. We'll make sure we put it around. <laughs> right on. Hey, Peter, thanks so much for doing this, dude. We really appreciate it. It's been a lot of fun. Appreciate there is one you. question that we ask everybody that comes to the show, and that sure. question is, sure. where do you see the automotive industry headed in the next five years and why? Oof. I don't know if you're going to like my answer very well. <laughs> I, I think uh, I love franchise auto dealerships. I think they're like – like Disneyland for adults, just shiny cars, cool logos, big things, all that stuff. But I think Tesla may have put the nail in the coffin for new cars when it comes to how they get them from manufacturers. And then, of course, you got Jim Farley or whatever saying that he's branching off Ford Blue and Ford EVs. So I think that eventually, as the industry moves towards evs i think you're going to see the less and less of the older dealership model and i i mean i'm probably shooting myself I, i'm going to have a job that will always be used cars <laughs> um but at least i think so but i think that you're going to see more and more of that i think the the dealership model mm, i hate to say it might be on its way out but it might be on its way out right That's on hard well there you have it <laughs> He doesn't even say anything. He's like, okay. No, in all fairness, that's how I always end them because that's your that's your perspective, right? So yeah, you know. I mean, like I said, though, I really love, uh, I, I I just love cars, and then I love photography, and when those two things came together for me, it was like I found my my purpose in life for this in terms of work, you know? So right pretty on. cool. There you yeah. go. All right. There it is, everybody. Peter Duffy. Thank you so much, Peter, for doing this. It's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Appreciate yep. you coming on. Um, that's all the time that we have for today, folks. Thank you for tuning in. And as usual, we'll talk later.
We only host the well respected. The vendor Lexus Nexus. We don't sell digital marketing. What you do? We inspected with our DT vendor management. Now more than ever, businesses need more efficient sales. That's why thousands of dealerships trust Four Eyes to help with things like automated inventory email updates and ensuring all of your leads get into the CRM. To try Four Eyes for free, visit foureyes.io slash dealer talk. That's foureyes.io slash dealer talk.